So today I'm going to do a quick video on the methods I use for uh, safely handling centipedes. Um, I won't say the centipedes are trained, but they are um, basically, uh, I guess, conditioned to act in a certain way. Um, you go ahead and feed it. This one is pretty docile. I've used this method on it quite a bit, um, so it will come out and come onto my hand, as you can see here. So I'll bring it up and out. Um, when I use these methods, centipedes consistently act like this. What I typically do is hand feed it and then I stroke the side of its head and by the mandible. And so it gets accustomed to my touch over time. Um, I feel that people completely misunderstand centipedes and think that no matter what they're gonna bite, but they're pretty predictable, um, especially if you work with them often. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one back. I don't want the video to go on too long. And we're going to move to the next specimen. There we go. Close this one up. And so this is my uh, Scolopendra gigantea, of course. And I'm going to do this one next. Now let me grab a cricket. Now, she started out pretty jumpy, but she calmed right down real quick. And I've only used this exact method. So we're going to take the cricket. I'm going to let her smell it. Wake her up. She's going to grab it. And now she's going to let me touch her. As you can see here, we'll let her back up and get calmed down. She may go hide. Let me move the dish here. Okay, so once she starts eating, I go ahead and I let her smell me with the antenna. And then I go ahead and I caress the side. And she'll allow me to do this. I did a video of this yesterday. And they calm right down, like I said, using this method. Make sure that they can sense you, though. Because if you touch them and they think it's something else, like if you touch them from the back before they sense you, they will get, uh, I guess, not necessarily aggressive, but protective. Um, she knows I'm here, so I'm going to let her touch me there. And then I can touch her back end, and she doesn't get scared. Now, I consistently handle her. I've never been envenomated by her. Um, I've only been envenomated a few times, and it's basically been my fault every time. If you accidentally squeeze the centipede in the wrong way or you scare it, they will tend to uh, bite as a reaction or pinch, I guess. Um, now I'm going to move to the next one here. This is a Scolopendra alternans. Uh, I haven't worked with it as much as the other ones. Um, and alternans do tend to be a little jumpier than uh, most of the other centipede species. But this one I have worked with a little bit. So I'll go ahead and let it get on my hand here. Alright. So as you can see they're flighty. They're a lot more scared of you. Um, than you would think. That's why they tend to pinch, I guess, uh, to protect themselves, of course. Now, just going to handle this one for a second here. They will tolerate um, pressure being applied to them as well, as you can see here, without envenomating. Now, that is if they have been conditioned for a little while and you have worked with them a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put this one back. We're going to move to a Scolopendra polymorpha. <laughs> if I can get it off my hand. It doesn't want to go back in there. I almost got it back. Let's see. I'm going to get it on some moss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one is certainly giving me a hard time here. 
I'm gonna just sweep it into its container here. Well, we got a centipede on the loose. Not really. It's on a piece of paper here. I got it back on my hand. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to just dump it in here. <laughs> there we go, that one's a little wrong. All right, let's move to the next one. All right, I uh, got it right here. So this is a Scolopendra polymorpha. Oh, this one tends to be real flighty, but a lot nicer than a lot of my other polymorpha. Um, it does have a blue hue to its back, so this is a really pretty specimen. And she handles lots of pressure. She doesn't bite pretty much under any circumstance. At least I haven't been able to get her to. She has her uh, modified forcipules there in the front open as if she would be ready to envenomate, but she will not envenomate. So as you can see, most of these individuals act very much alike. They're either flighty or they're real used to me like that Arizonensis. Um, the heroes tend to actually come out and react to you um, once they do get accustomed to you, which is pretty cool. Same with the Gigante over here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this one back and we'll move on to my last specimen tonight. This one went in a little easier than the other ones. So this right here, Scolopendra Heroes, it's um, a hybrid, it's going to jump and run once it senses me. No, no, this one's actually becoming quite accustomed to me, it appears. Um, I have handled this one consistently every day, um, and I've been hand feeding it as well. This is a cross between um, a blotched Heroes and a Castaniceps, um, or a blotched Heroes Heroes, I guess. Um, it's still young, but that's the best time to start getting these guys handled and accustomed to you because if you get them accustomed to you at this size, they're never going to envenomate as adults. Um, now, if you get a wild-caught adult, I do have an example where I caught it a little rough and I squeezed it. Um, she does tend to envenomate now because she sees me as a threat. That is my only one that envenomates me, though, consistently. So we're going to go in and put this one back. We'll move to the next one. See if I can get this one off my hand with any luck. I'm so scared he's being a good boy. Here we go. All right. This is the one that consistently, consistently uh, envenomates. She is a huge uh, seven inch polymorpha. Um, when I caught her, I grabbed her and she bit me or well pinched me during that experience but now she's kind of scared of me when i do touch her because she remembers me well probably not remembers but she sees me as a threat now um anyway but let's do a, a quick update on my ricida communal setup and then we'll end the video um as you guys know, I've been doing this for a little while now. I just posted some videos that I made a while back, but just got to posting them. Um, so we'll come in close here, and we're going to look right under the rock. Now, I bet you they're all going to be together under here, because I found Ricida actually like to live in little groups. Mm -hmm. There we go. Now, let me get one of these guys out. These ones uh, I've actually hand-fed and picked up quite consistently. So here's one of my bigger Ricida. This was the one that a long time ago I did a little mite video on on how to get rid of mites and stuff. Um, and his mites cleared up right away, or her. I haven't really sexed this one. It is very small and I would need a uh, probably computer scope or something of that sort to uh, see the uh, spinning organ or the absence of a spinning organ. Um, but this has been a really cool experiment because people always say centipedes are cannibalistic and this pretty much proves uh, opposite, at least for this species. Um, they go, they seek each other out intentionally, um, which is pretty neat uh, and very unexpected results for this. But uh, anyway, yeah, that was just a quick video I've been really wanting to do on centipedes. And I don't suggest uh, 
anyone go and just handle their centipedes without first taking precautions and knowing that you may be envenomated during the process. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, is that um, centipedes are not going to envenomate unless they feel threatened. And on top of that, uh, I feel that if you do really desire to hold your centipede, this is the method that has worked for me and I have been using uh, with great success. Like I said, uh, I don't really get envenomated by these animals and it's because I've taken these precautions and done this with them. Um, you can have your own opinions on whatever uh, you think about this, but I know from experience how they behave. So uh, thank you for watching and you guys have a great night.